Working with Timberland was crazy, first off, just because growing up, like, he was literally my favorite producer, like, still is one of my favorite ones. Um, his sound, like, is just unmatched to this day. Like, I would say, like, any song he's touched can still compete with, like, what's on the radio now. I was really just in shock the whole time, you know? But then, too, because he was, like, so cool, so it was, like, weird. Like, dang, I'm working with Timberland, but he's cool. Like, you know, like the homie. So I was just soaking everything in, just being around him, like, in the studio and, like, the whole recording process. It was it was just really honestly fun. Like, it didn't really feel like, you know, I thought it was going to feel, like, scared. Oh, my gosh, I'm in with Timberland. But it was like, he was like, go in there. Like, do your parts. Like, let's go. Let's get it. And we just knocked the song out. A couple weeks later, shot the video. And then once again, it was like, by that time, you know what I'm saying, we had a good chemistry, so we just, it was just fun. <laughs> That's in, to sum it up. I would say what I learned with um, working with Timberland was just kind of just being open. You know, we had a conversation, and it was just pretty much like just kind of always being open just to like not being stuck. You know what I mean? Like knowing like things evolve, you know, sounds change, you know, everything is, is evolving and kind of just, you know, not just being like, oh, well, this is me and I'm not, you know what I mean? So I, I would say definitely incorporating that because me, like, I'm, I'm a fixed sign. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. So I can get like that sometimes. Like, no, like, this is what it is. But kind of just being a little more open, I would say. I would definitely say that I took that away from, from the whole process of working with him. Just like, you know, just being open. So I would say some memorable studio moments for me is the fact that I'm pretty much been locked down and working with uh, one, one producer for the majority uh, of the songs that I've been recording as of lately. Uh, his name is Rich, new, new producer out of North Carolina, and he actually produced my whole uh, EP that I recently put out, 213. So it's just dope. Like, I don't know, when I record, I don't really have all the hoopla and like, you know, 50 people in my session, all that. It's just like, you know, it's really chill, like me and him, and we just vibe, you know what I mean? So I think um, I like being in that space more. We just like have a crazy chemistry. So like it, what I like about the process now is that nothing seems forced. It's not this whole like, oh, here's a song. We want you to record it, go, you know, and you just have no kind of like, tied to it so you don't feel it doesn't feel personal like because sometimes that can happen you know obviously with you know the comp the record company or just somebody sending you a record and it could be super dope but you're just like I don't feel it like it's me you know what I mean so with him it's just I would say it's just been super dope just because it is me you know what I mean and we're just able just to vibe and just create like our own little sound and lane so um I've never really just gone in and just kind of did like a, a big body of work which is kind of one one or two producers, you know what I mean? Well, I can say that's been the biggest change is that I was, you know, kind of tired of bouncing around from like, oh, go on with this person, go on with that person. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but I just was like, I felt like it was kind of all over the place. And now that I've locked down with just a handful of producers, I would say that like, I kind of put my foot down in the sense of that. It's just like, you know, like I know kind of sonically where I want to be and who I had that chemistry with. And so I just kind of narrowed it down to, to that circle. You know what I mean? So I would say it's changed and the fact that I've just kind of, um, yeah, I've just narrowed it down. Like, yeah. So he was like, ma'am, I asked you one time, please just wait. She started to go off and the neck star snapping and boop, boop, bop, bam. And she put that phone up like this one last time and he grabbed that phone out of her hand, right? He put a phone on a waxed floor in a mall with a 5,000 people trying to chase Usher and you just slide it through the mayhem. I guess I was even more uncomfortable than I thought I was. So I had like a few drinks and maybe like a few shots. And then by the end of the night, I'm crying to my tour manager just about life. It was like, all right, I see what you did with this song but can you do it again? <laughs> it was like, can you do it again? Can you, you know, was it a fluke? I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> he's disrespecting me right now. You know, he was smiling, but at the same time, if I wrote a weak song, it would be like, get this kid out of here. You know, Kanye thought it was really dope that a couple can be young and, and still be fly and balance their careers and their family and still have that friendship on top of your relationship. You know, and I think he did a lot of thinking after we talked. And um, he just randomly hit me, told my A&R, like, yo, I want T to dance and fade, to fade. 